Brain Plasticity In everyday life, we see that the human body is capable of many ways of repairing itself and adapting to the environment. Skin can heal from a cut, bones can be repaired, even the liver can regrow itself when a part of it is cut away. In contrast, when it comes to the brain, people can have neurological issues that last for the rest of their life. If the brain can repair itself, why are we not seeing more people heal spontaneously from brain trauma or neurological disorders? We will answer this question in more detail in the chapters that describe what we currently know about increasing the ability of the brain to change its structure and overcome deficits. In this chapter, we will be discussing what we know about the mechanics involved in changing the structure of the brain. Neuroplasticity Neurogenesis Neuronal migration Synaptic plasticity Dendritic arborization How to increase brain plasticity As mentioned earlier, the human body is capable of many ways of repairing itself and adapting to the environment. Stem cells that already exist in the body can go to work to repair damage in the skin, bones, and organs. The skin of the body is an amazing organ. It keeps our body protected from infection and UV radiation, helps regulate temperature, provides the sense of touch, and can even help generate vitamin D. If you suffer a laceration of the skin, an adhesive bandage may be applied over the cut. For more severe lacerations, stitches, staples, or glue may be used to keep the wound closed to help keep it protected from infection and to help it to heal. However, the stitches or bandages do none of the healing. They may keep the wound clean and pull the two sides of the wound close to each other, but the healing is actually done by the body. While the skin is healing, epidermal stem cells begin to rapidly grow new skin cells to firmly reattach the two sides together and heal the wound. This means that there are skin stem cells available to repair skin. Even without a wound, epidermal stem cells are constantly at work renewing skin cells during the regeneration process. In fact, your skin will regenerate itself every 27 to 35 days. The skin is an excellent example of how stem cells in the body can help repair itself. Another excellent example of repair from stem cells is the repair of broken bones. When a bone is broken, the medical procedure is to put it in a cast or otherwise immobilize the break. Then the patient waits until the bone heals. Specific bone stem cells, called osteochondral reticular stem cells, found in the bone marrow, will self-renew until called upon to generate key bone and cartilage cells. Research is ongoing and continues to show that stem cells exist throughout the body to help repair the body and often are found in the location in which that repair is needed. Perhaps the most dramatic example of stem cells repairing an organ exists in the liver. It can entirely rebuild itself to its original size even if as much as 50% of it is surgically removed. Hepatic progenitor cells, HBCs, the human counterpart to rodent oval cells, have been studied and tracked to show that they play a most important role in liver regeneration. Let's now discuss the brain. Can it also repair itself? Are there brain stem cells? Only relatively recently on the scientific timeline has neuroscience been able to find answers to these questions. In 1960, Mark Rosenzweig discovered that certain triggers could cause the brains of rats to increase in volume and neural density. Further research over the following decades has provided much detailed knowledge about the triggers and conditions that activate the ability of the brain to repair damage and to grow in size and complexity. There are, in fact, stem cells in the brain. Like other stem cells, they continue to self-renew, even throughout adulthood. Currently, brain stem cells have been found in several areas that are important in brain function. The olfactory bulb, the hippocampus, 
which plays a role in learning and memory, the septum, which processes emotions, the striatum, involved in movement, parts of the spinal cord as well as in the subventricular zone and ventricles to areas deep inside the brain filled with fluid. Stem cells in the brain, like other stem cells in the body, can both renew the organ and repair the organ. Studies have confirmed that brain stem cells can become neurons or glial cells for supporting brain growth. New cells added to the hippocampus differentiate and mature into adult neurons within a period of several weeks. Research has demonstrated that the brain has within itself the capacity to renew, repair, and grow. Brain plasticity, also known as neuroplasticity, refers generally to the brain's ability to alter itself in a way that makes lasting changes to its physical structure, even into adulthood. Brain plasticity includes microscopic changes and changes as large as cortical remapping. Brain plasticity includes the growth of new neurons and glial cells, as well as structural remodeling, which changes the number or shape of dendritic spines and branch points. Brain plasticity has been demonstrated in the brains of a variety of different adult species, including birds, rodents, monkeys, and humans. The following are all elements of brain plasticity, neurogenesis, neuronal migration, synaptic and non-synaptic plasticity, and dendritic arborization. The formation of neurons is called neurogenesis. The term is made up of neuro, meaning relating to nerves, and genesis, meaning the formation of something. It is therefore used to describe the brain's ability to generate neurons. The brain is able to create new neurons for the duration of life. Neuronal migration occurs as part of neurogenesis. Neurons grow in several areas of the brain and then migrate to their final location. Neuronal migration generally occurs along a path through the white matter to the cortical area of destination. A major part of the brain involved in regeneration and repair are the olfactory bulbs, where a unique growth factor discovered in 2015 shows an acceleration of the migration of the neurons. You may note that sensory enrichment therapy concentrates on the olfactory system quite heavily. Synaptic plasticity affects the neurotransmitters at the synapse and non-synaptic plasticity affects the neural connections and pathways. Some of the ways a synapse can change are by releasing more neurotransmitters, becoming more sensitive to the number of neurotransmitters present in the synaptic cleft, developing larger pre- and postsynaptic areas, interneuron modulation. Generally, a neural circuit that is used more often increases the number of synaptic contacts, Interestingly, a more frequently used neural pathway may take over synaptic sites formerly occupied by a less active pathway. The structural remodeling of the cellular components of the brain controls communication between neurons, thereby improving the speed and quality of the messages. Dendritic arborization defines the process in which an existing dendrite grows to connect to another neuron or the growth of a new dendrite from an existing bud on the axon. Both of these processes resemble the growth of a tree branch. How to increase brain plasticity? As mentioned earlier, in 1960, Mark Rosenzweig not only discovered that brains can change their structure, but also how to activate this process. The manner in which he was able to cause the increase in the size of the brains of the rats he studied became known as environmental enrichment. By building on the considerable collection of research in the area of environmental enrichment in the last few decades, and by using the scientific principles of brain plasticity, we were able to create an effective therapy for children and adults. It is called sensory enrichment therapy and continues to evolve with the research. When left alone or understimulated, the brain does not appear to be very active in repairing itself. Also, a brain that is stressed, overworked, or overstimulated 
will actually reduce its capabilities and structure. However, when a brain is properly stimulated, or in other words, enriched, then these appropriate stimuli will trigger the brain's natural ability to be plastic and to grow. This includes neurogenesis, synaptic and non-synaptic plasticity, dendritic arborization, and neuronal migration. All of these elements of brain plasticity increase in an enriched sensory motor environment. Consequently, sensory enrichment therapy is designed to provide the right kind of triggers for brain plasticity and at the same time protect the brain from negative stimulation, much like a bandage or a cast for a broken bone. In other words, sensory enrichment therapy aims to maximize all aspects of brain plasticity in order to allow the brain to heal itself. Scientists have already shown neurological rehabilitation in many diseases and conditions of the brain that have been reversed or at least ameliorated through an enriched sensory motor environment. Indeed, clinical research with humans shows that sensory enrichment therapy produces results consistent with the improvement of the brain and its structure and neurochemistry. In this chapter, we reviewed the mechanics of brain plasticity, including neuroplasticity, neurogenesis, neuronal migration, synaptic plasticity, dendritic arborization, how to increase brain plasticity. In the next chapter, we will review what we know today about triggering these mechanisms and increasing the ability of the brain to change its structure and compensate for damage and various dysfunctions.